According to Passmark's AMD vs Intel marketer graph, Intel has been heavily dominating the CPU market since 2006. What happened and how have Intel CPUs evolved through the previous 10 years? But first we need to take a deeper dive into the CPUs we will be taking a look at. It all started with the launch of the core microarchitecture in the first quarter of 2006. Conra was a talk in Intel's TikTok model. Every tick was a new fabrication process, meaning a physical shrink of the transistors to allow for better power efficiency, and every talk was a new microarchitecture, usually resulting in increased performance. As you can see on these graphs, Conroe-based Core 2 Duos were able to run laps around the old netburst-based Pentium Ds they were replacing, while running significantly cooler. It was the increased power efficiency of Conroe that led to the first ever consumer quad-core CPU, the Core 2 Extreme QX6700. The QX6700 was made up of two separate dies. Each die on the QX6700 held two cores, making the QX6700 a quad-core. Having four cores, the Core 2 Extreme and Core 2 Quad allowed for much better multitasking and immensely increased performance of multi-threaded applications like video editing, image processing and animation. In 2007, Penryn was launched. Being a tick in Intel's TikTok model, Penryn was still based on the core microarchitecture, but it had been given a few minor improvements and it had been shrunken down to 45 nanometers. The shrink down to 45 nanometers lowered the power consumption and heat output, allowing for the existence of quad core laptops and server CPUs with up to 6 cores. With the introduction of Nehalem in 2008, the first Tonk after Conroe, there were big changes, many that have been left unchanged for today. While the previous core microarchitecture supported both DDR2 and DDR3 RAM, Intel completely ditched DDR2 support with Nehalem in favour of DDR3, which was both faster and less power hungry. On the server side of things, we see Intel's first 8 core CPU. Nehalem also marks the introduction of Turbo Boost, allowing CPUs to dynamically overclock when thermals and power limits allow for it. The LGA1366 Nehalem Core i7s and Xeons were also the first Intel CPUs to have 4 cores packed together on a single die. Nehalem introduced level 3 cache which all cores could access to benefit multitasking. Nehalem also brought back hyperthreading from the Pentium 4 which allows multitasking applications to more efficiently use the available cores and increase performance. With Nehalem, Intel finally got rid of the ancient and slow front side bus for communication between the CPU and the rest of the system. They replaced it with the much faster Quick Path Interconnect or QPI for short. LGA 1366 featured an on die triple channel DDR3 RAM controller, allowing memory speeds and latencies never seen before. With LGA 1156 for the mainstream, we see a slightly toned down version of Nehalem. We see a physically smaller socket with less pins and one less memory channel. With LGA 1156, Intel moved the PCI Express controller from the north bridge to the CPU die. This made the QPI a sleep because there was no north bridge for it to communicate with any longer. All of the north bridge's functions had now been integrated into the CPU die. With the tick of Westmer launched in 2010, we see the transition to the 32 nanometer process. The transition to 32 nanometers allowed for up to 10 cores, up from 8 on the server side of things, and 6 up from 4 on the enthusiast and the workstation platform. On LJ1156, there were introduced new hyperthreaded dual core i5s and i3s. These new core i5s and Core i3s introduce faster onboard graphics that has been moved from the North Bridge onto the CPU. With the next talk, Sandy Bridge, launched in 2011, we see improved onboard graphics and two new sockets, LJ1155 for the mainstream and LJ2011 for the enthusiast and server market. Sandy Bridge features much improved clock for clock performance compared to Nehalem and Westmere. Nevertheless, since Sandy Bridge, not much has happened. We have seen new technologies such as DDR4, USB 3, Thunderbolt, PCI Express Generation 3, and new storage standards like M.2 and NVMe to mention a few. We have seen better onboard graphics and improved power efficiency, which has allowed for more cores on the desktop and server and for thin and light laptops to become a thing. And finally, each generation has brought small but truth be told, an exciting performance improvements of 10-15% to per generation. Which brings us to the benchmarks. The benchmarks run on these systems with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770 graphics card. Instead 
the bench R15, we see larger gaps between Conroe, Penryn and the Halem, Westmere and the Halem neck and neck, and Sanderbridge pulling ahead, with Iberbridge coming in with a marginal victory. In 3D Mark Firestrike, we see much of the same story as in Cinebench R15. In GTA 5 though, things get a little more interesting. We see the four newest generations in the tight race, while both Penryn and Conroe fall significantly behind. Overall, Intel made big progress from 2006 till 2011, especially with the huge launches of Conroe and the Halo. But maybe because of that, Intel has decided that computers are fast enough today, or that AMD has been largely uncompetitive during the last five years, not much has happened. Hopefully this will be changed by AMD becoming more competitive. There might be hope, as AMD's Zen architecture is right around the corner, with big promises. But that's another topic for another day.